Welcome to part 5 of the Snowtrack Shaded Tutorial by Peerplay. Apologies for the delay on this final part. It's already spring and we're still creating snow. In this part I will show you a technique of bringing the snow back where the tracks in the snow were created. We'll be creating a new shader that creates random fragment points on which to draw new snow and apply that to our splat map using graphics.lit. We'll start by creating a new unlit shader. So go to create shader and we'll select the unlit shader and let's call this snowfall now unity already created a starting point for us but we're going to remove all the fog everywhere so make fog work let's remove that and scroll down and let's also remove uh, this line over here which is about the fog and we can remove this line as well now we need to create a random value. In C Sharp we can use the mathav.random function, but we can't use that in shaders. On the internet there has been a pseudo random generator function going around, and we will simply copy paste that in the shader. I will include this little code in the description so you can easily copy paste it. So scroll down and underneath the v2f we're going to create this function, and I'll paste it. Let's uh, clean this up and we've got a float random. So I'm not entirely sure why these numbers are this specific number and maybe someone at DAS can explain this to me. First of all it's creating a dot product between the input factor and the magic numbers. I'll just call them magic numbers. The dot product is best explained when you try to create shadows on an object. Then it takes the sinus of that value and in the end it takes the frag of that value. What a frag function does is that it only returns all the decimal values. So if the value would be 1.25, it would return 0.25. And if the value would be 100.88, it would return 0.88. Now with our random function in place, we'll move on and we'll add some variables that we can specify later in a C-sharp script, on which we can specify how the flakes will appear. So we'll type a half, and we'll call the first one the flake amount, which will specify the amount of flakes that will appear and also we'll add the flake opacity and the flake opacity will specify the strength of each flake that falls on the ground now let's scroll down to the frag function and between these lines we'll create a new line and we're going to create our equation here and we'll call this a float and I'll call this our value random value and we're going to use the random function that we created so rand and this requires a flow3 so we'll type flow3 and the flow3 will contain on its x position the incoming uv coordinates so we'll type i.uv.x on the y parameter we'll use the i.uv.y and on the z we'll just type 0 now to create our randomization, we'll multiply this by the time.x, which is the internal clock of the GPU. Now what we want to create is that the equation of our value returns either 0 or 1, and only the points that return 1 will be applied. And to do this, we can use the seal function, and we'll type seal around this. At this point, mostly, if not all values, will return a number slightly above 0, which would make almost all points 1. And we need some control over this and let some numbers fall under 0. And we can add the flake amount to the equation to have some control over this. So we're going to say minus between parentheses 1 minus the flake amount. Now to understand this equation a little bit better, let me type it out and we'll say for example that the flake amount is going to be 0.1 and we'll say that the random value would be 0 0.88 now if we do the equation on this we'll have the 0 0.88 minus the 0 0.9 because 1 minus 0 0.1 is 0 0.9 and that would give a value of minus 0 0.02 and that will become 0 because the seal value will put the 0 0.02 to 0. Now if the random value would be 
91, then the equation here will become 0 0.01 and that would turn it into a 1. So in that way it would create different spots of 1 and zeros. Now let's remove this and we're going to set the return value because now it's only returning the color but we need to return the R value as well. So we'll say that the color will be minus because we're going to subtract from the color uh, into our splat map. It will be minus the R value and that will be multiplied by the flake opacity. So it's outputting ones and zeros and where it's outputting the ones and zeros if we multiply that amount by the flake opacity and let's say that the flake opacity is 0 0.1 then it needs to fall 10 times on the ground to become its normal height again. So we'll put these in parentheses and just to make sure that the value is between 0 and 1 we're going to saturate the value which is the clamp 01 in C sharp. Now I just noticed I made a typo in the equation because this float value has to become a float 3. And with that in place, let's scroll back to the top and we're going to change the unlit of the shader to hidden. So we don't need this visible in Unity. Now let's go to File and Save. Back in Unity, go to the plane on which the Snowdrag shader is and we'll add a new script and we'll call this the Snow Noise. And in this script we will apply the shader we just created to the splat map of the snow track shader. So let's start by creating a public shader and we'll call this the snowfall shader. We can then assign the snowfall shader we just created in the inspector. Now let's also create a private material and we'll call this the snowfall material. Now let's make a reference to the mesh renderer. So we'll say the mesh renderer is going to be a mesh renderer. And in the start function, we're declaring that mesh renderer is going to be get component mesh renderer. Now let's also specify the snowfall material. So we're going to say that snowfall material is going to be a new material based on the snowfall shader. Now we need to be able to set the flake amount and the flake opacity in our C-sharp script so we can easily adjust it. So we're going to add here a public float and we'll call this public float the flake amount. Now let's also create a public float for the flake opacity. And to make it easier for us, let's create a range for these values in the inspector. So we'll say range and the range of the flake amount will be between 0 0.001 and towards 0 0.1. It doesn't have to be that big of a number. Now for the other value we'll create also a range and this will be a range from 0 to 1 for the opacity. Now to find the correct value of flake amount and flake opacity, we'll update them in the material of the shader in the update. So we'll say here that the snow material, snowfall mat, dot set float, and we're going to set the float called flake amount, and we're going to set that to this flake amount. And the same thing we'll do for the snowfall material dot set float for the flake opacity. Oh, I gotta put an underscore there. And we'll use here the flake opacity. Now we need to get the splat map of the snow track shader that we've got in the mesh renderer where this component is running on. So we're going to create a render texture and we'll call the render texture snow. Now the splat map texture is a normal texture but we want to use a render texture so we're going to cast to a render texture and we need to get the mesh renderer dot material dot get texture 
And which texture do we want? We want to get the splat, and it's called splat with the underscore. Now this setup requires two different draw calls. First we need to apply our splat map to a temporarily rendered texture with the snowfall material, and then we apply that result back into our splat map. So we're going to create another render texture, and we'll call this render texture temp. And it's going to be render texture dot get temporary. And get temporary requires first a width and a height. So we're going to get the snow render texture dot its width, and we're going to get the snow dot its height. Now the depth buffer will be zero. And now we need to specify a render texture format, and I'm going to use the render texture format dot ARGB float. Now what we'll be doing is we're going to use the graphics.blit. So we'll type graphics.blit. So what the graphics.blit function does is it creates a draw call. It takes a source texture and writes to a destination texture with a specific shader material. This is often used in creating post-processing effects, for example, applying bloom or depth of field to the camera. But for this example, we will use the snowfall material and draw to the splat map instead of the camera. So as the source texture, we're going to use the snow and we're going to write towards the temporary texture and we're going to use the snowfall material. Now we need to get the temporarily render texture back into our snow render texture. So we're going to use graphics dot blit again and now we don't need to use the material we can just say that the source is the temporary texture and the destination is going to be the snow now in the next line we can apply the snow to the splat map material so we'll type mesh renderer dot material dot set texture and we're going to set the texture splat to snow and now the last thing we need to do is we need to release our temporarily rendered texture because otherwise it will create a buffer and it will eventually crash Unity. So we'll type render texture dot release temporary and we want to release temp. Now let's save the script and go back to Unity. And now in Unity we need to select our snowfall material so let's drop that in there. I'm now going to start a scene and drive around a little bit, creating some tracks in the snow. And once we've got some tracks, we'll increase these numbers to see the snow reappear. So let's drive around. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round. Alright, so we got some tracks. Now let's park the car here and see what happens when we increase these numbers. So we've got the flake amount, we'll increase this number a little bit and nothing will be happening because we still need to increase the opacity. So let's put this a little bit higher and now you can see little flakes appearing in the snow so we can set the amount really high and then they will all disappear very quickly. So with the current system of snow particles that I've got set up, I am setting the values here to 0 0.01 and I'm going to set this to 0 0.08. And yes, it is faking the reappearing of snow, but fake it till you make it. This is the end of the Snowtrack Shader tutorial. I hope you liked this series and helped you in becoming better at writing shaders. If you learned something, hit the thumbs up or leave a comment. To support me creating these tutorials for free, you can choose to become a patron on my Patreon. As a thanks, you'll get access to all the source files of this and all other tutorials and extra content.